Hi there, Garden Doll here with you from our lower garden with Coleman Alderson talking about squirrel proofing your tomatoes. Hey folks, you know tomatoes are the number one crop that is being grown, at least in the United States, very popular. We've had a lot of inquiries come in on our Facebook page at GardenZall.com asking about how to control squirrels. We've had a long storied battle with our squirrels in this area. We live in the woods, squirrels surround us, there are nut trees everywhere, and when tomato season comes about, the squirrels just go crazy. It's like they're just waiting for that all-you-can-eat tomato buffet to happen. And uh, a couple years in a row, we've had just pretty serious decimation of our tomato crop. And uh, you all know what I'm talking about, so I won't get into that. But we've been trying to creatively find a way to cage in the squirrels. Now, I could say cage in the tomatoes. We want to we want to keep the tomatoes from escaping because you don't want rampant giant whopper tomatoes roaming the neighborhood. But uh, really, this is this is a contraption that's been all oh, maybe two months in the conception and experimenting and doing that. And it's still, I got to say, it's still in the beta phase. So you all might see something that uh, if you decide to try something like this, you could certainly improve on. We plan to improve on this, but it's best, they, they say a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. We know tomorrow never comes, so we, um, we implemented this this weekend. Now, um, I'm going to ask the camera person kindly to come and, and sort of peer down this system here. We started with um, a straw bales at the bottom and then we did the Florida weave here to keep our tomatoes in line and you can see I can move the whole row. This is kind of cool really. I can move the whole row just, uh, just with this Florida weave here and um, that way I could keep some of the leaves back from the edges and you'll see why that's important. Can you show the string that's the woven part? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Can you see where it crosses? Yeah, I can it, see where the pin crosses. is. Oh, and by the way, uh, sometimes something like a clothespin is necessary because the plants do tend to slide. You don't want to constrict them so much it cuts off the circulation. So we've deployed a little extra thing in, in clothespins. I love sharing this stuff because it's stuff that we've discovered and it actually works. And uh, I think a lot of gardeners feel that way that uh, if they can help other gardeners improve, then all the better. Um, so the basis here are two cattle panels on either side, and uh, they're the heavy duty. It's not a flimsy thing. Then at the top, we use uh, concrete reinforcement wire. It's uh, about the same same squares as sizes as the cattle panels. And we built this on the ground. We arced it cut it up, arced it in several sections, put it together with zip ties, and then laid um, runs of chicken wire on top. Now I defy any squirrel to try getting into this thing at the top, so that leaves the sides open. And uh, by the way, we did get down here on the bottom with some chicken wire. Uh, it's about two feet high to do several things. One is to keep the squirrels out. The other is as the bales tend to fall apart, um, this wire will help keep it together. So uh, multiple functions there. Now let me show you what we've done here at the end. Uh, see the sophisticated system we have right here. Uh, <laughs> it's a bamboo pole available in our backyard and uh, we, we use bamboo for a lot of things, but right now it's serving as a, a prop to keep this up uh, so that I could do the string tying this morning. Um, it's real simple to drop this down. And as far as securing this down past this netting to sort of seal everything off securely, um, we're experimenting with zip ties. Of course, you want something that you can, you know, uh, uh, untie or unfasten fairly quickly and not spend a lot of time. So we're doing zip ties and also um, carbiners. Uh, is that right? Carabiners. Carbiners, right. <laughs> um, if you could make your way over to this side, I'll show you how we're um, we're working here with our our system. This is um, 
This is plastic chicken wire, and it comes in rolls. These are three-foot rolls, and uh, this is a ten-foot run, so I had to split a roll right down the middle. But um, it's fairly lightweight. It's plastic, so you're not getting stuck by little loose wires and all that. And what I've done here is uh, basically fixed it so it will. Um, let's see if we can get this done. Fixed it so I could get in here and maintain the tomatoes. And then when I'm done, we just roll it down like this. Uh, PVC pipe is right here that everything is fastened onto, mainly to help the rolling effort. And also, we're going to uh, pin the PVC pipe down here with carbiners which is um, fairly easy to do. Just come along here, clip into this, and that will secure that. Any, any gaps in here we can, we can seal off. This here will be dropped down and we'll come over and... This here, can you say that again because I wasn't... Sorry, this, this chicken wire, this mesh here will be taken down and it will be fastened down here so you have a good, nice, squirrel-proof seal that will keep the squirrels from coming out. Um, nothing much else to add on this. Hey, I have a question, Coleman, because yeah, sure. we um, were using the um, motion-activated sprinkler systems with great results uh, on the squirrels, and we've written about that. Yep. So why did we have to do this extra measure if those are working so well? That's an excellent question. The squirrels got smart, and they began to figure out where it wasn't spraying, and it was almost, I'm not, not going to give them, you know, uh, too much credit. But they seemed to know that they had a five-second interface to run from uh, after the sprayer went off to wherever they could hide from the sprayer. And they still made raids on here. And, and we would hear the, sprink, the um, uh, scarecrow water system going off. We'd run out. And it was about that time, the squirrel would be running out of the cage and, or the, the tomato area with a big tomato in its mouth. So it's not 100% effective. The other thing was we were densely packing the tomatoes in. We're not doing that this year. Instead of three rows, we have two rows. So there is space. And um, we're going to put a, uh, a system at this end, a scarecrow system at this end, and at the other, just in case. But what we're doing is we're restricting access for the squirrels. So if they do come and they do try to get in, they're going to get zapped and they're going to not have any place to go. Yeah, and hey, we don't mind sharing with the squirrels, but they had a habit of oh. taking bites out of a few few bites out of the best ones and then throwing them aside and going for another one. So It was so sad. Yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> I mean, you get so infuriated, but hey, they're doing what they do, you know. They to them it's a treat and to us it's it's not so uh, it's not so great. Well, our garden is coming along great. This we pretty well implemented everything in it. Um down here is where we're standing in the tomato cage. We've installed several new gardens, and we'll tell you all about what's, uh, what's going on on our next garden update. But in the meantime, um, any ideas that you all have, any comments about the system that we put up, any thoughts as to how we might improve, or anything that's working for you guys, we'd love to hear from you. Um, drop us a comment on the Facebook page. Let us know what's going on. That's all I had to say. All right. Signing off from Gardens All. Thanks for watching.